Hello everyone. Today uh, I'm going to show a little bit about uh, how I animate characters in Blender. Um, maybe uh, if people watch this they can pick up some tips on, and change kind of their workflow or whatever. But I mostly animate characters for games. So um, that's what I pretty much been doing uh, most of my career I've been doing this maybe 15 years uh, most I used to animate mostly human characters now I animate mostly animal characters but I'm going to show kind of the process of how I kind of animate in um, blender for a game engine so we have I'm working my latest product is going to be this ostrich and here we have the rig for the ostrich um, there are different settings I usually while I'm animating I'll usually animate uh, with this stick view of the bones um, but sometimes you know I kind of you can use wire as long as you can see the bones and that'll give you a less obstructed view but it makes it a little bit harder to um, uh, select the bones. Uh, if you go into your outliner, you can um, select this, highlight this, and then you can um, decide whether uh, you want to be able to, to select the mesh or not. Okay, because when you're animating and you're animating on bones, uh, if you're selecting around, you don't want to accidentally animate uh, select the mesh so if you turn on that option now we can turn off that selection and now we won't ever accidentally um, select the mesh there we go so that's um, this is of course a custom rig that I have um, but it's set up like most rigs um, a little bit of IK in the legs of course, I don't have a handle for, to uh, do that. But if, you know, you kind of don't always need a handle. If I need my leg to bend or turn a certain way, I can just do that or rotate it like that. It's not that big a deal. So um, just a little bit more about the rig. For the arms and stuff, I just have some simple IK at the end. Same thing with the tail, um, same thing with this head and neck, uh, and there we go. And we have some facial bones and t a tongue and some eyelids and all that. All right, so that's a look, a quick look at the rig. Uh, I mostly animate when I'm um, going through the whatever movement I'm creating. I'm usually doing it in the dope sheet. Um, but you'll see this as action editor. I'm always in the action editor because it's, it's the same thing as the dope sheet. But in the action editor, you can actually have multiple animations for your scene. So this is kind of how I block out the animations for each um, animation for the character, you know, like running or idle or whatever. And I'll kind of show that process real quickly. Um, before we get started, though, um, probably want to dig into the preferences a little bit. Um, if you go to navigation, I always select, well, you can see my options here, but a key one is orbit around selection. So if I'm selecting on a bone, it will orbit around that bone or an object if it's an object you're on. Um, so I always check that. Um, I always check zoom to position too. So if I zoom out, it's always going to zoom in or out according to where my mouse is. So let's say I want to look at the feet. I can point my mouse at the feet and then it'll zoom right to that position or the head or whatever. So uh, those are two options I use. Uh, what are some other options? I always allow negative frames and... 
think that's the only major one. Uh, channel group colors, I always turn that on because I like colors uh, on my bones. So save all that. So here are the colors of the bones. I always kind of label the bones in colors. And that way, when I look at my dope sheet, I can kind of see um, what each one is just by the colors. So all if I'm working on the wings, then I know, yeah, these are all the wings just by the color of the bone. All right. What else? I think that's it to get started here. I'm just going to do a couple animations and, and show you kind of how I go through the whole process. Um, in my action editor, usually my top animation is, uh, I call it action, but really it's just a reset of the whole rig. So select all the bones, Alt-G, Alt-R, and just make sure the whole rig is kind of zeroed out. There we go. And then I usually set up, you can um, list these bones however you want. You know, it's nice to have them grouped together. So if you have an order that's weird or anything like that, you can just select that bone and then hit page up and page down while you're hovering over this uh, to move the bone around in that um, grouping. So I usually get that set and then I'll create every animation off this action animation. Okay, so I can just um, add a new, copies this, that way I have the same order and everything for my um, rig. Uh, do I like those down there? Hmm. Let's see, let's fix that before I... So let's select both of those. Let's move this up to maybe there. Yeah. Maybe make that one there. Or maybe one up. I'm <laughs> being anal here. There we go. All right, so now all my bones are grouped and I'm going to copy this and now I'm going to start on a new animation. We'll just do a quick idle. I'll call this idle one because I'm probably going to have quite a few idles for this, um, for this ostrich. Now, idols, uh, for most video games, they don't need to be long. They don't need to be, you can kind of chop them up into each one of their movements. And then within the game engine, you can tell it to play this one or this one or that one. And they don't even have to have the same start and end frames because in a game engine, you can have them blend uh, the animations in between. That's why it's nice to separate out all the animations and not have one long string of animations like they used to do way back in the day. Some people still do that, but I do not. Okay. <laughs> oh, so we're making an idol, and of course, an idol, uh, the main idol, the first idol, I make it very simple. I, it's a little bit of breathing, not a lot of movement. So um, I'm, I'll walk us through this, okay? And maybe on the first frame, I want it to be lower. Um, why am I not moving? Oh, no wonder I'm on the wrong bone. <laughs> so I'm just going to lower this. Of course, I have IK on the legs, so the legs automatically move. Uh, I'll zero that out because I don't want to go that far down. So just a little bit like that. And I want to make sure my toes are still on the ground or my feet are completely level, just like that. And this one... I'll move a little bit so they're not exactly the same. There we go. So that's my first frame for the body and legs. And and let's see. 
And usually I make animations unless the, um, the character has a lot of really fast movements. Uh, if, it, if that's the case, then I'll make it 60 frames per second, um, the whole animation set. Uh, for something that is not super quick, uh, I'll keep it at 30 frames per second. And for like the first idle, I'll only make it like a couple seconds. All right. So uh, we have this first frame. I haven't done... <clears throat> Excuse me. I haven't done that much with it, but let's select this first frame and copy it and then go to frame 60 and paste it. So now we have at least that. And then at frame 30, you can make it third. Yeah, we'll go 30 frame 30 about halfway. And we'll lift it up slightly. So now we can go, I can hit up and down on my arrow keys and go between frame one and two, the keyframes. Now remember, I'm using um, auto keying right there. And let's see, I'm only the ac active keying set I'm using is only location and rotation. So when it automatically sets a bone, it'll only set its rotations and its location. And that's it. Not scale. All right. Now you can do scale, but um, most of the time I try and stay away from it. Some uh, game engines use scale for other things too. Anyways. So they don't allow you to use it sometimes. But the major game engines... Um, will allow it. So now we have a little bit of up and down kind of breathing. Maybe I'll add a little bit of movement. I'm in the middle now and I'm just going to add a little bit of movement just like that. Now notice what I'm doing uh, or how I'm like rotating bones. I'm using my view and then I'll hit R on the keyboard and rotate that that bone using my view okay if i turn I had a wonky view like this on the side and i rotated it then it would do something wonky like that so it's totally dependent on on your view this is how i'm using it you can animate in all kinds of different ways you could use the widgets and animate like this okay but i tend not to do that all right, I, okay, so let's reset this bone and I'll show you. I'll hit three on my keyboard. I'm always animating in orthographic mode too. Okay, not perspective mode. Now, if you want to analyze a movement or whatever, look at a play, look at it in its final version, you'll go into the perspective view. But while I'm working, I do not, okay, while I'm working on, a, on an animation. All right, so I have a perfect side view and that now I'm hitting R and now I'm getting a perfect side view rotation on that axis, okay? So this is why I do it. I'm getting a perfect rotation. It's not wonky or whatever. If I want wonky, then I can purposely do that, but I don't want to accidentally do that in my animation or at least when I'm starting out and creating a movement. I want to try and keep things on the right straight axes, not be all wonky on, on, especially on the X axis. All right. So we have a little bit of movement here. I want a little bit of breathing. So like this, which makes kind of the head come up. And what um, characters tend to do is they tend to try and keep their head steady. Because imagine if your head was bobbing up and down constantly. So your whole body might be moving up and down, but your sight view is trying to keep level at the same level. So this is what I'm going to try and do with this head. And of course, I have a little bit of IK in there, so I can just move that head around like that. I think I got to move it forward a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. 
Or maybe if he's coming up, maybe he needs to come back when he's up. So I think I need, I think I want to take this pose in the neck. So I'm just selecting all those bones for the neck, copying it there and pasting it there. And I'm going to paste it at the other end too. Okay, so now we have a movement that's kind of more what I want, but his head is still coming up. Okay, so that's more what I want. Okay, maybe slant his head when he comes back. So just like that. Um, and I can hit play. And maybe the mouth needs to open and close a little bit. This is a, just a simple idle breathing pose. Nothing all that complicated. And I want that tongue not sticking up. There we go. And I'll select all of those bones, copy and paste them at the end. And then I'll come to the middle and open the mouth a little bit. There we go. All right. So now we have a little bit of breathing. Nothing too exciting for the base idle pose. Now these wings, when they're resting, this is in its default state. So when it's resting, I think it, I need it to be a little bit closer to the body. Now notice how I'm doing this. I'm rotating around the bone, finding a view that's going to give me the right rotation. And then I'm just hitting R, rotating it, and that's it. So I think that looks pretty good. Let me get a perfect side view here and just rotate this down. Maybe this could come over a bit. And now I'm going to take this, copy it, and paste it on the other side. Wait. Copy and paste it on the other side. I mean, I can adjust this from here, too, so they're not perfect with each other. And... Okay. Now I did this on the first frame. I need to do it on the last frame. So I can hit, I put a lot of things in my quick favorites. So if I hit Q, I can select things that I use kind of all the time. And so I'm, I'll hit Q and I have groups in here. And what groups will do is groups will select this whole bone group which the bone group is how they're colored. So I know that I want to select all of the wings. So now I'm going to copy those wings, go to the last frame and paste it. And then I'll have a perfect loop. And now in the middle, let's see, I'll just create a keyframe by copying and pasting that bone set there. So now I want to see what I want to do on this upslope. Let's select this top one and just go down slightly. It might be too much. There we go. And then I'll copy and paste it on the other side. And there we go. On Maybe this could come down to other one come down just like that all right um this back i usually do things in parts or sets you know i'll do all the wings and i'll do all the tail so this tail i don't want i don't know if i want that sticking up in default because they usually go up high or down low they're either like this or like that so maybe I'll do this kind of in the middle and slope this downward a little bit. All right. So now I need to select that bone set, put it 
so it makes a perfect loop. And then here, I'll copy and paste those, that um, key, I'll set a key, and then go up and down, up. So I'll make this come down like that. All right, I think that's good. One thing I want to touch on, well, let's make sure our toes are always kind of the same. So I'm in the middle frame, the back toe. A little bit of movement's okay, but there we go. So that's kind of fixed. And now I don't want these eyes wide open. And because he's kind of in idle, I want to, I don't know, kind of going to make him a little bit cross-eyed. I just don't want so much white showing. Maybe a little bit of white is okay. And I'll copy and paste that to the other side. And I got to do that at the first frame and the last frame. All right. So should I shift the eyes? He's looking this way. And maybe I could go down slightly. There we go. Just a little bit of movement. Um, now, I don't want these eyes wide open, though. So let's go to the first frame. I'm going to try and look at this eyeball perfect sideways and then just rotate that eyelid down. Now, of course, it's digging into the eye and everything. Now, when I set these eye bones, I don't, I kind of want, I'm going to move them around like this. So I don't set them to be connected to another bone that might be slanted too far down. So just like that. Yeah, I think that's about right. So, oop, what did I just do? There we go. So copy and paste that eyelid to the other side. This lower one, let's bring up and let's bring it forward a bit and out a bit. Just like that. Copy and paste that to the other side. So now let's select all the eyelids and just copy and paste them. And here, should I do a middle one? And make them come up slightly. In the middle. Just a little bit of movement. There we go. Alright. And I think that's it. I think that is our idle pose. Our default kind of idle pose. A little bit of breathing. Maybe... Maybe, excuse me, I will add a blink in here for the idol. So I'll go about, about halfway into the animation. Um, we already have a keyframe set for the upper and lower eyeballs. So let's upper and lower right here. So these keyframes and I'll just selecting those all by themselves and I'm going to duplicate that and set it it's probably too far 10 frames 8 frames or so later so that way we have that the eyes are open and now a couple frames in. It's only, if you're going 30 frames per second, a blink is super fast. Like, less than half a second. Something like that. 
So I'm going to pull this down. He's stretching. It's usually the upper eyelid that stretches more. Um, make sure I don't have the eye bulging out. Okay, I think that doesn't look great there, but it's only half an, happening for a second. For half a second, really. Bring that lower eyelid up. And just like that. Bring it up. That's not bad. There we go. Am I moving too far up, I think? Those lower eyelids? Um, maybe a little bit. And then select the other one. Tap ones and pull them down more. All right. So there we kind of have the makings of a blink. And we'll take that frame and duplicate it, move it one over. So I want it to stay down so you can see that blink because it happens so fast and then come back up. So let's see what that looks like. It's not bad. Could be faster. Could hold it down, maybe another frame. Eh, blinks are are, are kind of fast, and it would be nice to have uh, sixty frames per second. But I don't know if you really want to do that just for a blink. You know. faster yeah that's really going to be fast eh, that'll work all right so there we go simple idle with the blinking animation and how else what else am i going to do here I don't know. I think that video might be long enough. I kind of covered. I think you got to see kind of how I uh, use Blender. Uh, that's what I kind of love. I've used lots of different um, animation tools. but uh, And not that this animation is all that exciting or anything. But I think you got a chance to see how... Uh, you know, you don't always have to have these ugly... Um, wheels and stuff and animate like this i mean to me this is kind of clunky i really love that um how uh i get to animate in blender because it's like you know i'm kind of rotating around the bone looking at the whole animation anyways so it's like, okay, well, this is where the view is off, and now I can just rotate on this while I'm rotating around it and animating. It just feels natural to me. Anyways, so that's a, a video of how I animate characters in Blender. Have a good one, everyone.